Hey gang, Diana here today. Thanks for stopping by. I'm here with a Jet Pens haul video and um, let's get right into it. I've been ordering from Jet Pens for years and uh, some of this I bought myself and a few things they very kindly sent me to review. And this is all sort of in preparation for working another way in my art journal. So let's get started. Uh, this is Ganzai Tombi watercolors. Watercolor. I have gold, bluish gold, and silver here. So I just put them in the lid of a an Altoids. You can get big sets of these, but I couldn't justify it because I have so many watercolors. So I'm really excited to to use these, and I also bought for myself this is a Midori Traveler's sketchbook and the paper is a bit heavier it's quite heavy I actually did a watercolor rainbow and the watercolor seems to have taken quite well on it and it also has perforated pages so you can pull pages out which is I find to be really really super helpful in a sketchbook because if I'm sketching and I want to hold on to that sketch and put it somewhere where I can easily find it, there you go. There you have it. So the next thing I'm going to, I asked for these Sakura Bull Sign outline pens and I generally love Sakura pens anyway and these came in gold green blue lavender and pink and I'm not sure what the ball sign means but let's have a look I just have some black paper here so this is Sakura oh so going on so rich Sakura ball sign And this is pink. And so you can see, let's see what happens, is it's like it's got a nice juicy, but, um, and here it goes, it's going to silver with pink around the edges of it. I love these pens. I don't know how they, how they do this. It's a, it's a mystery. Oh, it's a butterfly. I didn't know what I was drawing. I was drawing a butterfly. There we go. So they go on. They're, they're absolutely silky the way they go on. Now that these have dried a bit, they're way cool in real life. They're, they're white, essentially white pens with an underlying color. Very subtle. Okay, since I have the black paper out, I'm going to try these Gonzai Tom B watercolors that everyone was all excited about. And uh, they are really the, the little package they comes in they come in is beautiful. I don't know how practical it is. And the, the, the these little palettes themselves are really nice. Uh, it's got a good amount of color in it, and I am just mixing up the water into it. You know, I like to let the water soak into, so you get a good bit. So let's see how they perform. Well, oh, they're looking pretty good. Now that's the blue gold, bluish gold. And it does have a gold tint to it. I have to say that they're covering really nicely. They're really pretty opaque. And I, that was one thing I heard about the Gunzi, Gunzi Tombies, was that they had an opaque look to it. And I have tried other Japanese paints years ago. And they also have, they're somewhere in between a watercolor and a wash. Some of them, just by the nature of the color, are more, are more, uh, ooh, that's going on really nice. I'm pretty excited about these. 
That is really nice coverage for a gold watercolor. That is definitely more like a gouache. Let's see. They mix together. Seem to. Get some of that water off of there. Man, that has really I'm I'm impressed. Okay, I'm impressed now. They weren't kidding. They weren't kidding. All right, let's try that silver. And this does not look silver in the package. It looks like a white. So I'm really anxious to see uh, how they how the coverage is. So even if if you have just if you have a ton of watercolors and you just want a few, this is a great way to do it. There's an aqua that I'd really like as well. Yeah, look at that. Look at that coverage. That's amazing. I'm going to bring you in a little closer. I always do this wrong first. Oh my gosh, I did it right. Okay, so yeah, that is really super impressive. And these are have got a pretty low price point too. Um, wow. Okay, super impressed with this to my palette. So we can see, let's look at the difference between the gold and the bluish gold. The gold is more of a rose gold, and the bluish gold is more of a grassy gold, I would say. The gold is warmer. Really nice. Really nice. Thank you, Jet Pens. Okay. You can see the difference between the two golds, and there's the silver there. Okay, and I've always liked these Uniball pens. They're wonderful pens, and this is the blue-black, and that's, whoops, can't talk and write, and this is a 0.38, so it's nice and fine, so I'll be able to write in my uh, planner with this because you can write smaller with a finer pen, obviously. And I have usually have a scroll, like, oh, you know, I use a ball. <laughs> you know, I write really big. So it's nice to have a pen that is a little finer. And this is the lavender black. Uh, that's nice, too. That's a nice color. So these will be great for my planner. I'll put them in with my planner pens. I also use the friction pens in my planner because they are erasable. I'll provide a link to that. They were gifted to me about a year ago, and I really, I've been using them and they come in a broad range of colors too. And they are nice in a planner because if you need to erase something, you can. Okay, so that's those going with my planner. So these, I'd say, are going with my letter writing and my card making. These are going with my planner. The Ganzi, Ganzi Tombies are going with my watercolor stuff. And I think I'm going to switch over to this sketchbook and try out these these pens. Now, I've had this pen for for years. It's a Pentel pocket brush pen and it's awesome. And it actually has actual bristles. So, I mean, I don't know if you can see it, but there's actual bristles there. So, you can it just, it's so flexible and so wonderful to, to draw with. So this is a drawing pen. And I think all of these pens are water soluble. So you might want to paint over top or draw over top of some splotches of color rather than trying to paint something in. 
So let me just check. Make me a liar? Yeah, it did. It made me a liar. This is permanent. Or is it? Let's let it dry a while and I'll double check. I can't I can't remember. Um so you can pick up um, I think they call this a calligraphy pen. So if you do calligraphy, it's really good. Um, I'm not much of a calligrapher. But I do love that thick and thin line that you can get. And that takes some practice, of course. So. There's some grass. Always drawing flowers. Okay, I'll stop, I promise. Just another second. Put those leaves in. All right, okay, enough. I could draw with this all day. I love this pen. And I'm going to give this a minute and see. I'll give all of these pens a minute and see. Now, this is the Sailor. Um, Sailor Foodie Nagomi Brush Pen Double Ended. So let me open this. See how patient I've been? I haven't opened these things. Can you believe it? I can't. <laughs> I usually something, if I get something, it is immediately ripped open. Oh, there's a cute kitty. I love kitties. And this is probably all Japanese. I have this other Taylor pen that I've always loved. It's a black on one end and gray on the other. I'm looking for it. Oh, there it is. I, I got this at JetPen some years ago. And, I, and I've always loved it because you can add... That's, this is the gray side. You can add... It's just the nicest gray... So you could add, um, you know, shadowing. I, this might need to be replaced. I've used it an awful lot. But it's, you know, you could add dark areas. So that's that one. I don't know. I'll see if I can figure out which one this is. Actually, I've looked for it. But I'll ask the folks over there if they know. So where was I? Right. I was the here. Ooh, this is a pretty case, too. It's got little red sparklies in it. Ooh, pretty. Okay, there's the brush tip. And there's the nib. So, there's the brush tip. That looks pretty nice. And then the writing tip, or... Um, I'm just probably... I never use those ends. Um, I usually, if there's a brush tip, I go right to it. So, let's try with this. It's got a nice flexible tip, which is good. So you can, if you come up on the top of it, you can really get some thick and thin, which is nice. I guess um, that would be good for calligraphers as well. And um, I'm going to just try another one of these. I don't know what I'm drawing right now. We'll see what happens. I think I'm drawing. Ooh, I think it's a daffodil. Oh, it is a daffodil. Look at that. Okay. Sort of. Here we are. Two feet of snow on the ground, and I'm drawing daffodils. Ever hopeful. That's it. I'm ever hopeful. It's kind of a daffodil. I wouldn't call it exactly a daffodil, but you can see what skinny little lines you can get. And that's just a question that won't, you know, you won't make you draw skinny little lines by opening the pen. You have to practice that, but really fun. This is nice. I like this pen. And I promise to look at the other side too. Let's see now if I was, all right, I'm going to do the other side. And it's actually really nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can get really fine lines with the other side. Oh, I think I'm in love. I think I'm in love with this pen. So, uh, okay. There should be three. 
Wow, you can really get fine lines with that. You can really get fine lines with that. That's, I promise to use both sides of this pen. Ooh, I'm excited. I hope this video isn't forever long. It probably is. And this is the pilot, <laughs> here's, a, here's a word, Futayaku double-sided brush pen, fine, medium. This, by the way, was fine, medium as well. So I'm assuming, let's look at these ends, that this is kind of like that one. So let me feel like, uh, is there any real difference between the two? I wanted to see. That was one of the things I wanted to check. All right, so let's try something like, I'm going to do another poppy again, or pod, I guess. Okay, so I'm with, I'm on, I should really cover that if I'm not using it. I'm on the broad side. Okay, and I'm going to go down here again. Well, you can really, th this is nice. These are both super nice pens. Do I like one better than the other? I don't know. I think I'd have to, this tip seems a little firmer, so I don't, know if I like one better than the other or if this tip seems a little firmer on the pilot which is a is kind of a good thing because it's really a personal decision it's not a good thing or not okay so Right this second, I'm going to pick up the pilot pen again, or the um, sailor pen, and say, oh, darn, that's the wrong one. That away. I was wondering why it was so light. Huh. I mean, this this tip is, is um, definitely softer. So I don't know what you, whatever you like, I guess. I guess if I had to choose, I think I would choose the Pilot. But it's not... I'm glad I have both, frankly, because I can see using these together. Because I'm getting different lines from each of them. Okay, so I think that is it. Ooh, I forgot the sparkle pens. Oh my god, I'm sorry. How long is this video? Do I need to... I might need to make it two videos. Oh gosh. Okay, so Uniball, Uniball, um, gold and silver. I'll try to go through this pretty quickly. Super sparkly. I, I ordered these a while ago, and I um, love how sparkly they are. And they're, I love them. If you're a big fan of, of sparkle, you'll love them. Okay, and there it is. Ooh. And then these are, oh, this is another sparkle. No, I think this was like copper or brass or something. And I love the color of this. But this is a jelly roll, which um, if you haven't ever tried a jelly roll and you like pens, you should definitely try a jelly roll. Because these, these pens are fantastic. And these, this is, um, I'll put the actual link down below. But uh, I'm going to put the silver up there. So that is it, my big gel pen hole. I'm so excited. I love gel pen, uh, jet pens, jet pen hole. Um, thanks to jet pens and Christmas elves for getting me this great pen. So I hope that's helpful. Links will be to JetPens will be down below and down there. <laughs>
and um, more videos, links to more videos are always up in the top hand corner. So thumbs up. I hope I didn't take too much of your time today. See you soon next time with a travel journal uh, journaling. Bye.